Within the cell is the nucleus, and within the nucleus we have the nucleolus, and also territories of chromosomes, shown here as red worms. If we look at one of these chromosomes, we know that they contain a lot of DNA molecules. So here we have a short double strand of DNA. Now if we look at and zoom into one of these coils, we find a few things. I will draw a simple picture diagram of the components present in DNA. But please know that it's much more complex than this. Anyhow, DNA is made up of nucleotides. What are nucleotides? If we line the two DNA strands side by side, we can see a repetition of sugar and phosphate molecules. Attached to the sugar and phosphate molecules, we can also find what's called a base. Now the sugar plus the base plus the phosphate is what we call a nucleotide. Now these bases mentioned can connect to other bases on the other strand and they attach through hydrogen binding. And essentially this binding is what makes the double helix structure of DNA. So looking at one nucleotide now, we have the sugar and it attaches to the phosphate. A base can also bind to the sugar. And this is one nucleotide. Now, the phosphate and the sugar bonds make a continuous chain. They can make a continuous chain. And so here we have another sugar and phosphate, which binds to the first sugar and phosphate of the first nucleotide, and another sugar and phosphate, and so on. And as mentioned, the bases bind to the sugar components of this molecule. So here are the bases. So this is a single-stranded DNA. If it were double-stranded, parallel to the first strand are again a chain of phosphate and sugars, where the bases are able to bind to the bases on the other strand using hydrogen bonds. But can you see how the bases, there are four different colors of bases, two matching pairs? Well, there are only four bases in our DNA. But in order to introduce them, I will have to divert from the simple structure of one nucleotide and look at the chemical structure. The sugar is actually a five carbon ring. It's a pentagonal shape with the, with the fifth carbon attached to the fourth carbon from the right. Now this fifth carbon is what attaches to the phosphate group shown here. The sugar and carbon groups are always the same on every nucleotide in our DNA. The base, there are four different bases and they bind to the first carbon, and it, so it can be any of the four bases. Now there are two classes of bases. There are the purines and the pyrimidines. They all contain four nitrogen molecules in their structure. The purines consist of the bases guanine, also denoted as G, and adenine, uh, denoted as A. Pyrimidines consist of cytosine, or C, and thi thymine, also known as T. Sorry for the incorrect spelling. Now remember how I mentioned there are two pairs of bases, the ones which connect with each other in the DNA structure? Well, it turns out that guanine can bind to cytosine, and adenine can bind to thymine. Now these are the four bases only on the DNA structure. There is a fifth pyrimidine, uh, however, called uracil and uracil is only present in RNA. Thymine is not found in RNA. And so thymine is replaced for, by uracil in the RNA structure. So let's quickly look at RNA to get some appreciation of it. RNA is in humans are usually for protein th synthesis, but in some prokaryotes, it is their genetic code. Viruses, especially, comprises of double-stranded RNAs. And remember that the U replaces T in RNA. Single-stranded RNA can also be found in viruses and prokaryotes. Single-stranded versions are much more popular than the double-stranded versions. The structure of RNA is, is essentially the same as DNA, with a 5-carbon sugar group, a base coming off the first carbon from the right, and a phosphate group coming from the fifth carbon from the right. Okay, But note, please note that the second and third carbons from the right have a hydroxyl groups attached to it, or OHs. DNA can also be single-stranded, but in the human body they are usually double-stranded and have a thymine binding to ad adenine or instead of uracil. The structure is the same as RNA, except for the possible thymine base. 
actually for the thymine base. And also the second carbon in DNA, the second carbon from the right, does not contain a hydroxyl group. Instead it has no oxygen, only a hydrogen. So whereas RNA has two hydroxyl groups, DNA has one. That is why DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid, because deoxy means reduced oxygen, or without oxygen, but it's reduced oxygen. Let's just take a closer look at the DNA structure again. So here we have the pentagonal shape, oxygen being on top. Uh, the four carbons with the fifth carbon coming off the fourth carbon. Now all these carbons can be given numbers from right to left, and these numbers can be referred to, are referred to as primes. So for example, C1 prime binds to the base, C2 prime binds to the hydrogen, C and C5 prime, which I've circled, connects to the phosphate. And here is one nucleotide. C3 prime, which I have also circled, connects to the phosphate of, of another nucleotide, and so can build up a chain. This second nucleotide I am drawing has a guanine base coming off the sugar. Anyways, coming off the sugar of the C1 prime. So guanine coming up the C1 prime. But anyways, this basically uh, chain continues. From this diagram, so from this diagram we have learned that the nucleotides are linked together by phosphodiesterase bonds from carbons 3 prime and 5 prime. Let's take a closer look at this in more detail to get a better understanding. So here we have a phosphate which connects to the 5 prime of the carbon ring. The carbon ring has an adenosine base attached to the first prime. This constitutes one nucleotide. The third prime connects to another phosphate group of another nucleotide. And as you can see, this nucle nucleotide has a cytosine base coming off the first prime, which means that it wants to bind to guanine. And over here, we have another nucleotide, but it has not bind to anything yet. Um, and it has a thymine base. When a nucleotide has not bound to, uh, binded to another nucleotide, it usually ha it has three phosphate groups attached to it. And once bound, once bound, bound to another nucleotide, two of the phosphates on the end break off, leaving one still attached to the fifth prime of the carbon ring. The phosphate and carbon group is what makes up the sugar backbone of DNA. And the bases, the bases make up the nitrogenous base section because it comprises of four nitrogens. So as you can see from this single strand of DNA, the beginning is always a phosphate attached to the fifth carbon prime carbon, and so we can call it the five prime end. And the bottom is always a five, three prime end. Why are these three and five primes important? Well, it's because DNA synthesis is always done from a 5' prime to 3' prime end. Okay, so to make this a double-stranded DNA, the bases have to pair up, right? And so here again, we have a sugar backbone. And essentially, the other DNA is the other side up, or upside down, in order for the bases to bind. So here we have the carbons and phosphates. The base's adenine from the first left strand will bind to thymine. The cytosine will bind to guanine. And the new thymine coming in will eventually bind to adenine adenine. And so opposite to the first strand, the fifth carbon, th the fifth prime, the five prime carbon will be on the bottom and the third prime carbon will be on the top. And so this is the structure to make the bonds work. You can rot rotate it upside down but it will essentially be the same. Let's look at the dimensions of DNA. So here we have the two DNA strands coiled up. It shows the sugar, back sugar backbone consisting of phosphate and sugar one after the other and the bases are attached together like so. DNA is about 2 nanometers wide. One full curve of DNA is about 3.4 nanometers, and the distance from one phosphate to sugar is about 0.34 nanometers long. The pairing sequence of bases are, if you remember, guanine and cytosine, and thymine and adenine. And one strand runs from the 5 prime end to the 3rd prime end. And the 5 prime end on the other strand starts from the bottom, or the other side, and runs up to the 3 prime end on the top. So that was it for DNA. We will explore DNA replication next. Thank you.